Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come into your house today, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us, Lord. Lord, I ask that you be with Brother Jay for the message that you laid on his heart, Lord. Lord, I ask that you bless the offering. And I ask all this in the precious, sweetest name we know, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's good to see those that are here this morning. Um, we will continue on with our call to worship. So if you would please stand, we'll sing number 22, Bless His Holy Name, 2-2. Oh, 
Chris, good to be in the house of God this morning. I love the Christmas decorations and especially our, especially our uh, nativity set here. If, if you haven't seen it, come up and, and look at it, and it's just a reminder of what a, a great God we serve. Uh, but it is good to be here this morning. I've got a few announcements for you. Uh, of course, it is that Christmas season, and our church uh, collects for the uh, Lottie Moon offering, and that's what that wreath uh, represents up on the uh, wall over there, and uh, uh, Brother Gerald always sets a, a, a goal, and God always says that's not high enough, and, and the church has always responded in uh, obedience and given above and beyond that, and we can never outgive God, and we're uh, grateful for that, so be in prayer about that, of, of what God would have you to give to the Lottie Moon offering this, uh, this season. Uh, there's a, a mailbox out there uh, with the different alphabet letters of the alphabet on there. Go look through there, and there are probably some cards for you if you haven't already cleaned it out. Uh, they were, uh, if you want to give Christmas cards to church members, that is an awesome way to do it. Uh, they will be sorted each week and put in those mailboxes. And any uh, monies that you save for, for postage, if you would like to donate that, or give it back to the uh, church, it will go to the Lottie Moon offering. And so that's a, a one way that uh, you can give this Christmas season. Uh, on December 18th, we are planning to have a youth lock-in. Uh, we're very hopeful that we're able to do it in the Family Life Center, but we will see. Uh, but we're going to have it anyway. Um, and so this is more than just a typical lock-in youth, right? This is an outreach lock-in. So invite your friends, uh, church. Uh, if you have youth that you know would be interested in having a lock-in and a, a wonderful time with Christmas uh, celebrations, then uh, invite them. Uh, have them contact me and, and we'll get them set up and we'd love to have 40-plus uh, students um, at that lock-in on that day. Other announcements, the Children's Christmas Party is coming up on Wednesday, December 14th, so per, uh, please put that on your calendar, and that is a good way to outreach as well. Our Christmas Eve service is on December 24th at 6 p.m. Uh, plan on being here for that wonderful celebration as we uh, celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe we have yet another announcement. Challengers will be hosting a coat drive. Uh, so, <clears throat> on uh, we will be hosting a coat drive, and uh, for uh, we will give this to the Salvation Army, and we will we got a box out there, so <laughs> you can uh, give your old coats in to uh, the Salvation Army. Coats at the club, at the club. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, young men and David, for that announcement. <laughs> All right, we want to welcome you this morning to Hillcrest Baptist Church. If you're a visitor, thank you for choosing to come to Hillcrest this morning and worshiping with us. And if you're a, a longtime member or uh, been here for several uh, services, welcome back. And we want to uh, uh, extend that welcome. And the way we're going to do that this morning is we're going to stand up, we're going to sing. And as we sing, we're going to shake hands. And, and if you feel comfortable, hug next. I'm 
be seated. <laughs> what is the age of the um, lock-in? <laughs> um, I heard Steve say 40-ish. What's wrong with asking for 140? Okay. Can you handle it? All right. 140. I If you guys are willing to cook anything, they'll eat it. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen you turn anything down. Yeah. Um, we're going to pray. As we pray, remember we have several that have had some pretty serious health issues. We have one member, Jam. Some of you know Jam. She's the last, uh, last person that joined our church, I think. Uh, she, I think she was hit by a car. And she broke about half her body. And she's, a, she's in really bad shape. So be praying for her and her family. Finances. I don't think she has health insurance. So uh, just pray for Jam. Uh, we have some that are starting chemo this week. So we'll pray for each other and remember each other in our prayers all week. So let's go to the Lord and pray. Father, Lord, what a blessing it is to be in the house of God. And I pray, Lord, that everything we think about and attempt to do is uh, it's all for your glory. Lord, we want to live for you and we want to uh, commit our lives to you and surrender ourselves to you. I pray, God, today that you would speak to us, speak to each one. And, Lord, that as we leave here today, we would just know that we've been in the presence of our God. I thank you for the birth of Jesus. Lord, and the reason he came, and I pray, God, that the whole world would hear about Jesus and why he came, Lord, that he came to save everybody from their sin and offer eternal life. So I pray, God, as we take up our Lottie Moon offering, that the missionaries will have more at their hands and disposal to, to reach out to people and tell others about Christ. And Father, that we would give generously I pray, Lord, for the activities of our church, the ministries of our church, that, that as we hear you say uh, to do something, God, that we would respond, yes, God, we'll do it. We pray for the new building, Lord, and I do pray that it would be open by the 18th this month. God, that you would, you would allow us to realize what a blessing it is to have this building and the new building. You've been so good to this church. We thank you, Father, for every blessing that you've poured out on our church. I thank you, Lord, for each one here today, and I ask a blessing on them that they'll just hear from God. Father, we want to tell you we love you and praise you. You're our God, our Lord, and we worship no other. Thank you, God, for the place you've prepared in heaven for each one of us. 
I pray now, Father, that everything we do and say and sing and, and uh, read the Bible, all that will be for your honor and your glory. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Okay, children, come on down. Well, you know what time it is. It's the year. Christmas time. You guys, have you guys um, decorated your Christmas tree yet? Yeah, hmm. Has anybody ever, you know, I was going to bring a little Christmas tree and I forgot. Yeah, it says candy canes. Miss Lisa made these. But this is what I wanted to show you. You know, our Christmas trees are always green. Tell you a few things about this. I was watching TV the other day in, in New York at Rockefeller Center. They lit up a big old Christmas tree. I think it was 70 some feet tall. And you know how many lights are on that Christmas tree? 50,000 lights on one tree. That kind of uh, lighting lights up a lot of space. We saw it all over the United States, if you've watched TV. Back in Germany, when they first started decorating trees, they chose these evergreen trees. You know why? In the wintertime, you know, right now, if you went out in the woods, what kind of trees are green? Yeah. Not uh, oak trees, are they? They lose their leaves. And maple trees, all of the other trees just about lose their leaves. But the... Um, Hemlock trees and the cedar trees all were green. So they brought these trees into their houses. Back then they put candles all over and decorated them with candles. And you know what that that did? No, it didn't set it on fire. <laughs> it lit up their house. And the Bible, I want to read to you in a minute what the Bible says about that. But the green represented life. Uh, evergreen trees stay green all year long. And it just looks like they're loaded and oozing with life. So listen to this about Jesus. Because everything about the Christmas tree kind of reminds us of Jesus. Simeon is holding Jesus in his arms and says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. And this is what he says about Jesus. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So when we think about decorating our trees, when we think about Christmas and all those Christmas tree lights, Jesus says he came as light to this world. And if he came as light to this world, guess what you guys are? Yeah, okay. You are to light up the world. Shh. Light up the world, and as you go out into the world, it's dark sometimes, but you guys show them Jesus Christ by lighting up the world. You light up, when you walk into a room and there's nobody else that goes to church except you guys, put on a smile. Let's see a smile. Say, hee -haw. Look at me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Why do we say Merry Christmas? Who was born? That's because it's Christmas. I know that. Jesus was born, wasn't he? And you guys are to tell people that. So when you light up the room, you're telling others about Jesus. Okay. Aaron, you want a piece of candy? You're welcome. Are y'all going to come up here or not? You're welcome. You're welcome.
And you may remain seated as we continue on with number 87, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come, 8-7. stand as we continue on with number 76, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, 7-6. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen, brother.
Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land and the sleeping child you're holding is the grave? She always does such a good job, wasn't that great? When she told me, I, I asked, you know, she sings, I asked her to sing a special every month. And uh, she always tells me what she's going to sing. And when she told me that, that's one of my favorite Christmas songs. I love it when a Christian sings it. It makes a big difference when they sing it from their heart that loves the Lord. You know, this starts out December and there's a lot of Christmas stories in the Bible to go over. So we're going to start out in Luke chapter 1 today and look at, um, look at Mary, Jesus' mother. So Luke chapter 1, and we'll look at verses 26 through 38. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. As you're looking that up, I, would, I need to talk to the men for a second. Uh, you know, God has given us the responsibility to be the spiritual leader of our home. And as spiritual leaders, we ought to take it on ourselves to read this Christmas story to our family. It needs to be read. They need to hear it and hear it and hear it. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a home when Dad and Mom were Christians, but I'm never saw them open their Bible, and Daddy never read the Bible to us. And I, when Rhonda and I got married, we all, we kind of made lists of what we were going to do and what we weren't going to do compared to our parents, and one of the things that um, I learned halfway through after having kids was I needed to read the Christmas story to my children. So guys, if there's a man in the house, he ought to be reading the Christmas story to his family. Luke chapter 1 verse 26 through 38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a, uh, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when, he, when she saw him, she was troubled at, at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will, will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is how now the sixth month for her who was called barren, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from Mary. The heading over my verses in my Bible says, Christ's birth announced to Mary. 
I want us to kind of imagine what Mary's reaction was and what she thought when Gabriel showed up. And in my mind, I'm just seeing Mary minding her own business, just carrying on about life, and the angel Gabriel shows up. What in the world would you do if you were at home by yourself and an angel just appeared to you? How would you react to that? Um, and just told Mary that she's going to conceive a baby. And she knows in her mind how, because she has not been with a man. So this thought process, uh, when Claudia told me she was going to sing, Mary, did you know? My thought went straight to, I wonder what Mary really thought about this whole ordeal that she was going to be going through. I want to tell you, I have no idea how women think. <laughs> I read books to help me understand you guys. <laughs> and this is one of them. I have no idea what a woman would go through. And I talk to the men again, just you and me, men, don't pay attention to women. But I want to ask you, have you ever given birth? No, we have no idea what it is to give birth, do we? So when we think about Mary and what she went through, we're kind of lost. We just read it and get through with it and keep on going, but there's a lot of thought going in, into Mary's heart. You know, the Bible says, and she pondered on it all. Uh, we're to ponder on it all. We're to try to figure out what was in Mary's heart, what was in Joseph's heart. So what was Mary thinking? There's a video that I want to show you. It uh, has to do with Mary, but it's not Mary, and, but she's representing Mary. And it's, um, I, I chose it because it's a woman's point of view. So men, you pay attention and see what they go through with, with birth. As long as I can remember, we'd been waiting for the Messiah to come for us. My family, our tribe, our whole nation. I always knew that he'd come, but... <laughs> well, let's be honest, it's not like I'm from Jerusalem or someplace special. I'm just a girl from Nazareth. And everybody knows that not much good comes from Nazareth. Never has. Angel had come to the wrong house with his announcement. But if that's what God wanted, well, who was I to tell him he was wrong? And Joseph, well, God bless that wonderful man. He could have joined in with everybody else. He could have had me sent away. He could have even had me killed. But he just never broke the promise to marry me. And so when he had to go to Bethlehem for the census, I was honored to ride by his side. Even with heartburn and bloated cankles and nine months of pregnancy behind me. <laughs> you know those women who try different things to induce labor like going on frequent walks or eating spicy foods? What they should do is go on a bumpy 70 mile trip to Bethlehem not long after I got there, and I'd never done this myself, but even I knew it was time. And with every wave of pain, I tried to ignore the fact that my family wouldn't be there to help me, and that I'd be bringing this baby into the world without the familiarity of home. But when Jesus finally came, I forgot all of that, though. I just wrapped him in cloths and tried to make the most comfortable bed I could for him with the only thing I had, which was an animal's feeding trough. Joseph said I should have been sleeping then, but I couldn't stop staring at him. There he was. 
the one the angel had told me about. My heart was so full, I couldn't even find words big enough to express it. I know I'm not the first young mother to bring a child into this world. It's always been that way. But as I look down at my son, <laughs> my redeemer, I knew that he would change everything because he had already changed me. any of those thoughts but aren't you glad that Jesus was born we're going to look at Mary because I can promise you this she was no accident by God God chose her on purpose so let's kind of look at her a little bit closer look at chapter 1 verse 27 to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. <clears throat> Just a, one or two things that we know for sure. Mary was a virgin. She'd been raised by parents to keep herself morally pure. She was to keep herself morally pure for a future husband. And I wrote down, why is this important? And maybe the number one reason it's important is that Jesus is the son of God and not the son of Joseph. She was a virgin and she birthed our savior. Jesus was born perfect, uh, sin free, and this was because he was God. Doesn't the Bible tell us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God? <clears throat> including Joseph. Jesus needed to be sin free. He needed to be perfect. He was born of a woman without Joseph because he was um, to partake of our human nature. He was going to take on our nature, but it had to be perfect. So he's born of a virgin. He was born by a miracle of God so that he would not take on man's corruption, our sinful ways, our unrighteous ways. This was critical to us if we are to escape the condemnation that we're born with. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we take on the Lord. We take on perfection. We take on righteousness which we were born without. Without Jesus being born of a virgin, we could not take on righteousness. There's no way a man can be righteous without the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in a Savior that's perfect. Amen? And he died on that cross so that you and I could be declared perfect when we die. When we see Jesus face to face is because of his blood, because of his perfection, his sinlessness, not ours, not anything about us. If he had been born of Joseph's seed, he would not have been perfect at birth. When Jesus was born, he was born perfect. In fact, he'd been perfect since Jesus was. Let's keep on going and look at verse 27. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, we'll continue looking at 27. We call this being engaged, but back then it was more binding than just being engaged. It was like a contract that could not be broken. So Mary and Joseph were engaged or betrothed to one another. 
So what about Joseph? What's he look like? Who is he? So run back to Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to go back to Luke in a minute, so keep your finger there. But look at Matthew chapter 1, and let's see something about Joseph that uh, we need to understand. So Joseph chapter 1, verse 19. Matthew writes, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. He was a just man. He was a righteous man. We would call him being right with God, in a right relationship with God. Um, he was a man of integrity. Even though Jesus was God's son, he needed to be human, did he? He needed to be God in human form. So there was a reason why God chose Joseph. The Bible says he was a just man. He knew what God wanted, and he did what God wanted. He tried to live his life in a righteous way, in a just way, doing the right thing when it needed to be done. And if he heard something from the Lord, he did what God told him to do. So he was no accident as well. You take Mary and Joseph, and both of them are living for Christ, and they have the opportunity to raise God, the baby, until God can take care of himself. So there's a lot behind this being a virgin and being a just man that if we just read it real fast, we'll skip over it. Jesus' righteousness versus Joseph's righteousness. Uh, no one else can say they're perfect from birth, but we know that Jesus was perfect from birth. I wrote down some things about Jesus as he grew up from that baby to walking as an adult. Jesus lived as a man, yet he lived as God as well. We need to believe that in our hearts, that Jesus, this is scripture, this is the Bible, this is the Christmas story. Jesus lived as fully man, but fully God as well. He was able to live holy, righteous, and perfect his whole life. And when you think about that, you and I might have a, a, a word that ought not come out of our mouth. We might look at something and have an unholy thought, but Jesus was perfect from day one. He never had an imperfect thought. He never committed a sin. He never wanted to commit a sin. When he was tempted, it didn't take. He was never tempted to do the wrong thing. He was perfect his whole life. And this was a big deal. And the reason is his righteousness covers all of man's sin. Now grab hold of that one. His righteousness covers our sin. Um, man and woman, when we're born, belong to that all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. We can't become righteous without the Lord Jesus. We can't be covered without the Lord Jesus. The birth is going to lead into the cross. Without Jesus being perfect and dying on the cross, you and I would never have a place in heaven. Jesus was able to bear our sins, your sins, as he gave his life as a substitute for our sins. I'll let that one sink in for a second. We should be the one dying on the cross, not Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. The proof that Jesus was able to accomplish satisfying God's requirement was when he died on that cross for our sins, he spilled his blood and they buried him. What happened after they buried him? He arose from the dead. Where did he go to sit? He sat at the Father's right hand on a throne just like God. Could he have done that had he not been righteous and holy? Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for this sinner's sins, for yours as well. As we read the Christmas story, uh, remember that that little baby grew up to be God, grew up to die on the cross, spilled his blood because he loved us that much, 
God gave his only son just so he died on the cross for us. And now he's sitting at the right hand of God. And what's he doing at the right hand of God for us? He's making intercession for us. He's praying for us. He prays, David, for you. And at the same time, he's praying for me. Now, how does he do that? Because he's God. If there's 8 billion people on this earth, he could hear 8, eight billion prayers at one time and take care of them. And he intercedes in a personal way to God the Father for us. Look at verse 28, Luke 1, 28. And having come in, the angel said to Mary, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. The Bible says that God found favor in Mary. Can you imagine the meaning behind this? He looked at Mary and she found favor in God's eyes. When he sees us, he may be able to write the same thing about us. That he sees something in us that causes us to receive his favor. That ought to give us something to live for. She found favor in God's eyes and she'll be blessed. And then Joseph was a just man, a good man, and Mary was highly favored. I and mean, you put all this together and together they taught baby Jesus about holiness and righteousness at three years old, four years old in that learning stage. God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't do anything haphazardly. He chose these two because they were just people. They were right with God. They tried their best. Were they perfect? No way. But they, there was something to them that God saw that he chose them to have his, his baby. Jesus existed before creation of time. But, and there's a but here, to come back, he needed a human body, didn't he? That's what they provided for him. He needed a sin-free birth. Mary was a virgin. He would need godly parents to teach him godliness. Two-year-old just barely start to talk and, and think. They needed to be done right. He was our savior. He was God in human form to save us from our sins. That's the whole point of Jesus dying and being born for us, is to save us from our sins. His name is Jesus, which translates the Lord is salvation. He's our salvation. Look at verse 35, Luke 1, 35. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born is to be called the Son of God. God in human form, his name is Jesus, and he is our salvation. He came to save us from our sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you're looking at your Christmas tree, when you're celebrating Christmas, even before you open up all those great presents up under your tree, if you do that, Take your Bible and gather your family around the Christmas tree and read them one of the Christmas stories. Matthew, Luke, you can make it into John. You can go back to um, Isaiah. There's a lot of things about Jesus' birth that, that we can share because he's our Savior. So let me stop here for a second. This just came to my heart, my mind. Are you saved? I hope everybody says amen, but I'm asking, are you saved? Do you know absolutely sure that you're saved? Do you realize that God came down here to die for your sins without all these questions being answered by a holy and righteous God being born? We'd be just sitting here celebrating death without going to heaven. So think about your Christmas story. Think about Luke, what he writes to us, and think about Matthew, what he writes to us. And, and then ponder it in your heart as you ponder what they went through, what Mary thought about, what 
you're thinking about, make sure that you've invited Jesus into your heart as your Savior. Here's some lessons that we could learn from Mary and Joseph. Real simple. When God sends an angel, listen and do what he says. Now we have the Holy Word, don't we? So he can speak to us every single day through his word. When we read it, and it's from God, don't you think we ought to do what he says? If an angel appears to you, for sure, do what that angel says. But without an angel, you still have the word of God to tell you what God is saying. And that's what a Christian does. Hear what God has to say and do it. Number two, when God has a purpose for you, don't be afraid. Be strong and courageous. Mary was a young girl. Had never been with a, with a man. She knew that she didn't do anything wrong. She heard what the angel had to say, but she also knew the law. The law said she could lose her job for becoming pregnant without being married. Be strong and courageous. What if she'd have just run away? without Joseph. And that says a whole lot about Joseph as well. He loved her through it. Number three, when you're living your life, be ready to be used by God. I'm looking at all of us now, no matter who we are, what age we are. If God asks you to do something, you can do it. And realize that, that when God asks, we can do anything. When he asks you to do something, be ready. Number four, always yield to the Holy Spirit in your life. Kind of ties into number three. Be ready. Be strong. Be courageous. But when it happens, be ready to do it. And yield yourself to the Lord. That's exactly what Mary did. That's what Joseph did. They yielded their lives to, to God. Joseph accepted the story. He put his arm around Mary and loved her through it. He was going to put her away for a while, but no. He chose to, to be strong. Put up with the criticism put up with anything that people said because he was raising and he knew it. He was raising God, the Son of God. Number five, because Jesus is the Son of God and he came to save you from your sins, you surrender your sins to Jesus. You can't do it by yourself. The word forgive me for I'm a sinner. You surrender your heart to Jesus. You know, uh, he makes us a new creation, doesn't he? He gives us a new heart. When we get saved, we give him that new heart. We just surrender it to him, and then we wait. He may use you right then, or he may wait. You just surrender your heart to him, and then you surrender your whole life to Jesus. What a privilege it is to be a child of God. Uh, again, I'm looking at all of us. Whatever age we are, whoever we are, what a privilege it is to know that Jesus died for our sins. We accepted him as our Savior. We've surrendered our life to him, and we're waiting. Lord, use us. And he's going to use us. I promise you that. We've got a lot of stuff waiting for us over there. Are you willing to surrender your life to Jesus because it's a privilege to belong to our God? The older I get, the more I read, the more I look forward to seeing him face to face. I, I want to spend time with you guys. But man, if Jesus called me right now, I'd go in a heartbeat. I, I don't guess I'd have any choice about it, but, but I would look forward to it. I hope that you feel like that because it's the beginning of life. What we're going through down here doesn't compare. I mean, it doesn't even drop in the bucket to the blessings waiting for us. Let me close with this thought. It doesn't take a saint to serve Jesus. 
takes a willing heart, a surrendered heart. He can use anybody and everybody. He came to die for every single person on this earth. And he'll use every person that he wants to, including me, including you. These stories overwhelm me with a love for the Lord. I'm so glad that God thought enough of us to send his only begotten son to die for our sins. And I'm also glad to it that he gives us a choice. We can either accept it or reject it. Just, just for the fun of it. What happens when we reject the Lord Jesus Christ? It's pretty sad, isn't it? We believe in heaven and hell, don't we? You reject him, you go straight to hell. You accept him, you have a place prepared in heaven for you. The Bible calls it a mansion. Sit right in the presence of God. Guys, read the story. Let God speak to your heart and then read it to your family. Once you fall in love with this, your love will show to your family. And we can make a difference. We can uh, put a stop to some of this stuff that takes place in our schools. We can grow kids to be president of this, these United States. Godly kids. This is so important. To explain to them how much you love the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we sure do love you and we do read the Bible so we can grow closer to you. And sometimes, Lord, we don't understand it, but you'll give us the wisdom. You'll give us the understanding if we continue to seek you. I pray, God, that we would take the uh, Christmas stories from the Bible and, and study them and meditate on them. And, and Mary said, ponder on them. And God, that we would let them speak to our hearts and then we would make a difference in read them to our children and what a joy that'll be on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day to read the Christmas story to our family and Lord they'll, they'll get something out of it if we put something in it I pray Lord today that if there's anybody that, that does not know you as Lord and Savior that you would would rattle their heart Lord that you would shake their heart and, and let them know that you're waiting for them to make a decision to accept you as Savior. I pray, Lord, that you would do something during this invitation. This is your time, Lord, to speak to us. Lord, we, we just wait and get excited about what, what you can do and what you will do. Lord, I pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I'm going to be up front. I invite you to come forward and say, Brother Jerry, I need Jesus. Guys, let me, let me ask you to pray about, I know it's hard the first time if you're not reading the Christmas story to your, your family. It's the first time I did it, I almost died of a heart attack. I mean, it's tough. But take this time to ask God to help you. This is time between you and the Lord and pray Lord I am scared but then he'll whisper in your ear be strong and be courageous for me maybe there's something else going on in your life that you just need to get right with God to become holy and righteous in God's eyes I may never know what he's going to do during these invitations but I know he does things I know he speaks to people so let's stand and let God have his way with us I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to ransom my soul. Break down every idol, cast out every fall. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. 
whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, for this I most humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. By faith for my cleansing, I see thy blood flow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. John, would you close us?